Welcome to the rocket profile of the Long March 2F, the way China gets astronauts into space. The entire launcher uses UDMH, which is unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide as propellant. In fact, the main engines used throughout are all the same engine, the YF-20B. Each of the four boosters has one YF-20B and the core has four YF-20Bs. The second stage uses a single YF-20B, though this one is called the YF-22B because it doesn't gimbal and it is accompanied by four YF-23B verniers. Each YF-20B provides 814 kN of thrust, so that is the output of each of the boosters. The boosters burn for around 2 minutes and 8 seconds, though there's some uncertainty about that number. The efficiency for the engine is 291 seconds vacuum specific impulse. The YF-20B is similar to the Viking engines used in the early Ariane rockets, Ariane 1 through 4, as well as the Vikas engine used in Indian rockets. These are all based on a long line of Russian engines like the RD-250 on the Cyclone rocket, which also burn UDMH and N204. As mentioned, the core stage uses four of the same engines as the boosters. The only difference is the burn time, which is 166 seconds. However, while watching the Long March 2F fly, it is evident that there is not much gap between the booster separation and the first stage separation. So either the core stage is underfueled, perhaps because of the payload, or the boosters burn for longer than expected. With its four vernier engines, which are currently doing a bit of a roll oscillation there, the second stage outputs 831 kN of vacuum thrust. It also has a slightly higher vacuum specific impulse of 298 seconds. The entire stage is designated YF24B, while the main engine is YF22B, and the verniers are YF23B. The burn time for this stage is 5 minutes. Considering the size of the rocket, the upper stage has a very high thrust. There is no indication that the engine throttles, so close to the end of the stage's burn, the G-forces can exceed 5 Gs unless there is leftover fuel in the tank. The Shenzhou spacecraft itself resembles a Soyuz spacecraft because Russia has sold the technology to China along with the necessary training, and the Chinese put it to use. The craft you see here though is neither a Soyuz nor a Shenzhou, but uh, uncrewed progress used as a test article. The main difference between a Shenzhou and a Soyuz is the more cylindrical orbital module in the Shenzhou replacing the spherical Soyuz orbital module. This gives the astronauts more room in space. Until Shenzhou 8, the orbital module could actually serve as an independent spacecraft, like a mini space station. Long March 2F has been launched 13 times with 13 successes, a perfect record for this particular variant of the Long March 2. 11 of those flights were with the Shenzhou spacecraft and the other two launched a Tiangong space station in a modified fairing. The capacity to orbit of the Long March 2F is 8.4 tons. And with that, thank you for watching this rocket profile of the Long March 2F. In the last class, we had looked at uh, cycle analysis of uh, air breathing engines. Now, let us look at uh, rocket engines in the next few classes. Here, uh, we will be trying to derive expressions for specific impulse okay, and uh, how mass flow rate varies through a choke nozzle, how do we get thrust, how do we get exit velocity what are the assumptions that we make and as a consequence of these assumptions, uh, what do we have to deal with okay? or what is the error of these assumptions, we will look at it a little later in the course. Okay? Fine. So, now let us look at uh, rocket engines, now rocket engines All the three kinds of rocket engines that we uh, discuss, discussed in uh, the earlier classes that is solid, liquid and hybrid, all three of them have uh, the following that is they have
propellant storage then they have a thrust chamber and lastly a convergent divergent nozzle okay uh, in the solid rocket both these two are in the same uh, physical location whereas in liquids and hybrids all three of them are separate but one thing common to all of them is this part that is the nozzle part okay in the nozzle uh, what you have is the thermal energy because of uh, released because of chemical reactions is now converted into kinetic energy so in the nozzle you have thermal to kinetic energy conversion okay and as this is common to all three kinds of rockets we can study them exclusively okay and uh, without having to pay any need to pay any attention to what kind of uh, rocket it is whether it's a solid rocket or a liquid rocket or a hybrid rocket so we'll do that now we'll look at uh, the conversion diversion nozzle now uh, before we go there what we are going to look at is a quasi steady one dimensional analysis that is we are going to assume that all changes happen along the axis only there are no changes that are happening in the radial or the azimuth direction r and theta directions we don't assume any changes to be happening so all changes are happening along the axis so it is one dimensional which is not strictly true uh, for a rocket engine nozzle okay we'll see what uh, error this bring about a little later first is uh, we are going to make this assumption then we are going to assume that the chamber pressure and temperature are given to us that is let's say if this is the rocket motor we will assume that we know chamber pressure which is called pc and chamber temperature tc as known we'll also take these to be stagnation quantities that is if you look at velocities elsewhere in the nozzle and if you look at the velocity at the entry of the nozzle these velocities are very small compared to the velocities as you go along the nozzle so you can take them to be uh, stagnation conditions at the entry of the nozzle okay and uh, we are also going to assume that we are also going to assume that uh, as i said these are known to us firstly and we are also going to assume that uh, fluid is an ideal gas with constant thermodynamic properties okay 
that is the C p gamma thermal conductivity all these do not change as we go from this portion of the nozzle to the exit of the nozzle. Okay. Then we will also assume that the flow is inviscid. that is viscosities are very small and we will also assume fluid flow is isentropic. Okay. So, with these assumptions let us see what we can derive and based on this we will also evaluate what are the shortcomings of some of these assumptions are these uh, really valid and then we will try to uh, estimate what is the error in them. Okay. Now, uh, from your basic uh, gas dynamics you know that for a nozzle for a convergent divergent nozzle I can write d u by u that is change in uh, velocity as you move along the nozzle is equal to okay. Now, we know that uh, if m is uh, less than 1 what should be the d a by a if this has to fluid has to accelerate. If m is less than 1 d a by a has to be negative if fluid has to accelerate and if m is greater than 1 d a by a has to be positive if fluid has to accelerate. Okay. And uh, we know that if at the throat at the throat of the C D nozzle, Mach number is 1, then we call it choke nozzle. Let us now find out what is the pressure ratio. If you have P C here what should be the P A or what should be this ratio of P C by P A for the nozzle to be choked. Okay. So, let us find the critical ratio of this pressure for choking. In order to do this, uh, we will solve the energy equation from here to here, okay, from the entry to the throat section and uh, I can write one dimensional energy equation as one dimensional steady state and for inviscid flow uh, with constant thermodynamic properties, I can write the energy equation as H T plus is equal to U T, where C where C there indicates uh, chamber conditions and T indicates throat conditions. C indicates uh, 
and T indicates throat that is we are looking at this to be C, this to be T. Okay. Now, there is no heat addition that is taking place from here to here okay. and the composition is the same. So, if the composition is the same then C p has to be the same. So, C to T that is from chamber to throat which means that C P is same and there is only change in sensible enthalpy and it also means that only there is change in enthalpy because there are no reactions that are taking place. So, if all the change from C to T is only because of sensible enthalpy change, then I can rewrite this equation as that is I have replaced H T by C P T T and H C by C P T C. We also know that if the throat is if the flow is choked at the throat then at throat m is equal to 1 and therefore, u t is equal to a t that is the speed of sound which is given by here r is nothing but r is equal to r u universal gas constant divided by molecular weight. Okay. Now, using all this we can simplify this equation further and write it as because we know u t is equal to a t and a t is this. So, I can write it that like this is equal to We know that C p by C v is equal to gamma and C p minus C v is equal to r. So, dividing the entire equation by C p t t that is dividing by C p t t we will get 1 plus gamma r t t divided by 2 ok. Now, we know that uh, r and C p we can get through this. So, let me write that down. 
this will then become 1 plus gamma into 1 by 1 minus gamma this and this cancels out. So, you get 2 is equal to T c by T t or Simplifying, I can write T c by T t is equal to gamma plus 1 by 2. Okay. From this and knowing the connection between C p to temperatures to pressure for an isentropic flow, I can write P c by P t as equal to So, now we can get the critical ratio that is required for choking okay. and uh, if you substitute for gamma equal to 1.2 which is usually the value of gamma for uh, burnt gases, you get P c by P t to be 1.7 that is if the chamber ratio to the exit pressure or the pressure outside is greater than this, then the nozzle will be choked. Okay. So, for any pressure ratio P c by or for any pressure ratio that is from P c to ambient, wherein it is greater than or equal to 1.7, then the flow at flow is called choke flow. As I had said in the previous class, the advantage of choke flow is now it becomes independent of downstream conditions and it is only a function of upstream conditions. Okay. So, let us see how we can use this to calculate uh, what is the mass flow rate through a choke nozzle. Okay. We have calculated what is the ratio that is required for the flow to be choked. Let us now calculate what is the mass flow rate through a choke nozzle. Now, we know that m dot which is the mass flow rate is given by rho t e t into v t, where t as I said earlier indicates throat conditions. So, this is the density into area into velocity. Okay. Now, let me normalize uh, rho t and v t with respect to chamber conditions. Why? Because I know for a choke flow that it is only dependent on the upstream conditions. Upstream of the throat is the chamber. So, if I normalize it with chamber conditions, I will be able to derive some useful equations. Rho 
rho t and v t with rho c which is the density at in the chamber and a t which is the acoustic speed or the speed of sound at the throat. So, we will get m dot is equal to rho t by rho c into a t into v t l by a t into what is a t? I know that a t is equal to So, I will normalize this also with the chamber conditions and multiply by under root T c. What is this ratio? This is the ratio of uh, local speed fluid speed to acoustic speed which is nothing but Mach number, Mach number at throat for choke condition is 1. So, this is 1. So, we get m dot is equal to rho t by rho c into a t So, now we need to find this ratio and this ratio. We already know for choke flow what is this ratio, we also know pressure ratio. So, density ratio is nothing but rho t by rho c is nothing but p t by r t t into r t c by p c. So, R cancels out, you get P T by P C into T C by T T. We have already derived them, that is nothing but into gamma plus 1 by 2. Okay. This is the temperature ratio, this is the pressure ratio. So, now if we because these two are the same, we can add the powers and we can simplify it as rho t by rho c, I will get it as I also know T T by T C which is nothing but I need under root. So, this would be minus half. Now, I know all the ratios that I wanted these two, I can substitute them and get the relation for mass flow rate as m dot is equal to i i am sorry you did not remind me i needed to multiply by if i divide this by rho c i need to multiply by rho c again so this is rho c into rho t by 
rho c into this. So, I will get here rho c a t Now, I can deal with them because they are same base, but different powers I can add the powers. So, I will get And uh, further, this minus I can replace it as plus, and uh, this rho c I can write it in terms of pressure. So, I will get P c by R T c into A t gamma R T c, because I have a minus sign here, I can write this as 2 by gamma plus 1 into gamma plus 1. Okay. Now, I have <coughs> R T C here and R T C here. So, I can re-simplify all of this and write it as This is very similar to something that you have already derived in uh, gas dynamics, wherein you will not uh, use P c, you will instead use uh, P naught A star by T naught. Right? Uh, this whole function, this whole thing is a function of only gamma. So, uh, uh, normally in rocket literature, this is denoted as a gamma of gamma function. So, we get m dot is equal to p c a t by c star, where c star is called the characteristic velocity and uh, C star is given by 1 by gamma of gamma into R u by m is nothing but R. So, C star is given by this, where
gamma of gamma is only a function of function of ratio of specific heats that is So, this is the typical expression that we use in rockets uh, when we are discussing rockets for mass flow rate through a choke nozzle. Okay. Uh, this gamma of gamma is also called as a Vanden Kirchhoff function. varies from point six four to point six six seven for gamma variation of One point three. Okay. Now we know how to get the mass flow rate through a choke nozzle. Now, if you recollect back, we had derived expression for the thrust of the rocket motor when we were discussing about the thrust of the uh, turbojet engine, so or an air breathing engine, so. We know that uh, rocket engine F is equal to M dot U E plus A E. P e minus P a, where e indicates exit conditions a indicates ambient condition. So, you have here u e which is the exit velocity, exit area, exit pressure and ambient pressure. Okay. Now, we in the thrust equation, we already know how to calculate m dot for a choke nozzle. So, this part we know, we need to now find out how to get the exit velocity and then we need to get something about area ratios and other things. We'll look at it a little later. Firstly, let us get an expression for the exit velocity. How do we get this expression? We know that uh, the energy equation is valid from the uh, entry of the nozzle to the exit of the nozzle. So, from that we know we can write from energy equation H e plus u e square by 2 is equal to H c.
we had seen a little earlier uh, with respect to the throat this equation. Now, we apply it to the exit of the nozzle. Okay. So, I can rewrite this as u e is equal to under root 2 h c minus h e. Since we know that there are no reactions that are taking place inside the nozzle and the thermodynamic properties are constant from the entry of the nozzle to the exit of the nozzle, all this must be sensible enthalpy. So, therefore, we can write this in terms of U e is equal to 2 C p T c into 1 minus T e by T c and T e by T c we can express it in terms of pressure as equal to under root gamma minus 1 by this part C p T c part I can uh, use e, u e C p T c I know is equal to C p by R into R T c. Okay. Now, this R T c what is C star? C star is nothing but R u T c by molecular weight or R T c right. This is nothing but is equal to 1 by gamma of gamma into under root R T c. So, this part here R T c must be equal to C star square gamma square. Okay. So, I can put this what is C p by R? this I can write it as gamma by gamma minus 1 into okay. So, if I substitute back this into the expression for u e, I will get u e is equal to because this has square here and this is in the root I can take it out and write it like this. Now, what this tells us is that if we know the characteristic velocity and the pressure ratio we can get the exit velocity right. So, if P e goes to 0 what happens? If this will u e will be a maximum when p e goes to 0. So, when p e is equal to 0, u e is maximum and is called
limiting exhaust velocity okay. that is it will only become a function of the chamber temperature e becoming zero here means in this case if p goes to zero t also has to go to zero so the u e would this then become under root that is it becomes only a function of the chamber temperature but in reality we cannot get a condition where in the exit velocity this is not the ambient velocity ambient pressure this is the exit of the nozzle being at zero pressure this is not possible this will be some finite number so therefore you cannot get this condition but this is the maximum that one can get with a conversion diversion nozzle okay now we need to also get uh, one more parameter that is how does we still do not know how A e and P e are connected that is if we know the area ratio that from the throat to the exit how does how does one obtain P e from if knowing P c how can we obtain P e. So, let us do that. So, let us relate P e by P c to A e by A t. Uh, to start this what we know is we know that mass flow rate once the nozzle is choked and the flow is steady the mass flow rate at any cross section is the same and cannot vary. So, we know m dot is equal to P C A T by C star and is also equal to rho E U E A E okay, where E indicates exit conditions. Okay. So, from this I can get an expression for A E by A T as P C okay. Now I know rho e is nothing but rho e is P e by R T e and uh, if I substitute for that here, I will I also know the expression for u e which we just derived. Okay. So, if we substitute for both of them here rho e and u e, we will get an expression for a e by a t. this is the expression that we get 
once we substitute for u e and uh, rho e. Now, here what is again c star into if we take a gamma of gamma here. So, you get c star into gamma of gamma square which is nothing but r t c right. So, we get p c by p e into r t e divided by r t c that is we need to have a gamma of gamma in the numerator to account for this. into 2 gamma by gamma minus 1 ok. I can cancel the r's and uh, T e by T c I can again express in terms of pressures. I already have a P c by P e. So, I know that T e by T c is nothing but P e by P c to the power of gamma minus 1 by gamma. So, if I substitute for all this for this here and simplify or I can because I can put them together and rewrite this as Now, if you notice this is a relation connecting area ratios to pressure ratios. Mostly we will know what is the geometric area ratio of the nozzle that we are taking and uh, to get the pressure ratio from knowing the nozzle ratio, uh, nozzle area ratio using this equation is very difficult. So, therefore, we have uh, gas dynamic tables which will give you this or there are plots that will tell you how P e by P c varies if you vary A e by A t ok. We will look at it in the next class. Thank you.